So today I'm preaching a sermon called Unshackled Identity, Breaking Free from Limitations and Finding True Identity in Christ. How many of you know there is so many mindsets today that are not of God? They are of the enemy, and they are keeping this generation bound. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know truth, and the truth shall set you free. And so the enemy is trying to speak lies to this generation. We have new age and witch talk all over TikTok. We have all of these witches getting on TikTok and teaching this generation witchcraft. You're scrolling on TikTok and all of a sudden you come up on a live stream and you literally have somebody giving you a tarot card reading right in front of your face. You used to have to pay somebody and go somewhere and get a psychic reading, but now you're scrolling on TikTok and it's right in front of your face. Just like pornography, can we talk about it today? You used to have to go somewhere and buy it, but now you can get it for free on your cell phones. And so what's happening is, through this cell phone, can you guys hold your phones up? This generation is getting demonized through their cell phones. But I'm so thankful that we can use these for the glory of God to reach this generation. Because if the enemy can demonize this generation through social media, how much more can the Lord who has the victory, Jesus has the victory, the enemy doesn't have the victory, reach this generation through social media? Come on, somebody. All righty. We're actually going to get started now. So the conference theme scripture is 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, emphasize on holy, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Today, I'm going to give you the key to freedom in Christ. Because if we truly want to know and live out this conference theme scripture, we have to know how to be holy and set apart and free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. Where God's truth is, there is liberty and there is freedom. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So if you are a friend of the world, it literally means you're an enemy of God. We want to get, listen, this is okay to get mad at this. We want to get mad though. When we see adultery and people cheating on their spouses. That's fine. We should get mad at that. But the problem is we're cheating on God all of the time. When we go out into the world and we sin and we give ourselves over to the lust of the flesh and to pride. Yes, adultery is a sin. But also giving yourself over to the ways of this world is against God. The Lord, listen, I'm going to encourage you all today because you guys have a mission and a calling and a purpose on this earth. And to fulfill that calling, we need to be a people that are pure so God can work through us to reach this generation. So he can work through us effectively. We don't need to be vessels who are clogged with impurity. We don't want the message from God to man to be marred. We want it to have a pure, unwasted, unhindered flow. See, the Lord has not called you to sit in dead and dry church services that lack the power of God and sit in your pew until you get to heaven. He's actually called you to go out, to make disciples, to win this world to Jesus and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, every time Jesus went out... To preach the gospel, what did he do? How did he follow it up? He casted out demons. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. We're not called to dead and dry and lukewarm. Each of us have a God-given mission and purpose to fulfill on this earth. 
I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be a pew sitter. I don't want to sit in my pew Sunday after Sunday until I get to heaven and do absolutely nothing for God. See, the number one thing is your relationship with God. Because if we want to impact this generation by the power of the Holy Spirit, you, know, you need to know Jesus. Because how can we tell this generation to have a relationship with God if we don't have a relationship with God ourselves? If we don't know Jesus for ourselves? People will be able to see Jesus in you. Now, do they see the world or do they see Jesus when they look at you? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So he's with us when we go out and do these things. And we can do these things in confidence because we know the one who is with us. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18 says, And he said to them, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. I believe there's people in this room today that you feel caught up in the lies of the enemy. Maybe you have family issues. Maybe there's things going on with your family or maybe from your past. Maybe you're facing lies of doubt and insecurity. Whatever you're going through today, Jesus wants to set you free. He doesn't want you to be limited anymore by the powers of darkness. What did I say earlier? Jesus has the victory. Satan doesn't have the victory. So why are we Christians walking around with bad posture like this? Look, okay, I'm about to show you my bad posture. Already? Ready for this? Okay, this is how most Christians are walking around. All right? That's, that's terrible. We're walking around like, we don't have, I'm so depressed. I'm just, uh, this is a terrible day. This is, uh, no, like, let's speak life. Come on, somebody. I have the victory in Jesus. I don't have to be insecure. I don't have to come into agreement with the lies of the enemy. My hope is in Jesus Christ alone. And I know I can make it through this world because I have Jesus. The one who created me. You're not bound to the lies of the enemy. And I believe if you feel like you are today, that you're going to be set free. We're going to talk about open doors. The thing is, this generation is the most suicidal, depressed, and anxious generation out of any generation in history. Statistically. But this generation is also filled with witch talk, witchcraft. Bad, filthy TV shows, movies, pornography is off the charts, trafficking. And so we need to go back to the root issue today. What doors do we have open in our lives? See, we're, we're sending prayers up on Sunday morning, but we're sending nudes out on Snapchat on Sunday night. What are we doing? It's time to stop giving the devil free reign in our lives and stop going back to the things that Jesus has set you free from. See, we want to run to an altar and we're crying and we're repenting. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love it. There are so many times where I've been just repenting before the Lord and just crying and weeping. But true repentance is not just crying at an altar. True repentance is a life that is changed for Jesus. See, we're walking one way and we're walking towards the things of this world. You repent and now you're walking a whole different direction. See, true repentance in the Greek is a change of mind. Before the Lord. It's a change of mind. 
It's not crying and crying over and over again in an altar. It is that too. But it's when you get back home from Extend Conference, I'm going to put the phone away. I'm not going to watch pornography anymore. Lord, I'm giving my life completely over to you. Every single area of my life, I'm not going to have open doors to the enemy. The enemy doesn't have victory in my life. Jesus has victory in my life. See, guys, I, in high school, I started watching this show. This was after salvation. I got saved at 13. So in high school, I started watching this show that all my Christian friends were watching. And I thought it was going to be fine and clean and whatever. So I started watching the show, 13 Reasons Why. And so y'all may know what that show's about. And so I have never struggled with suicidal thoughts or depression but as soon as I started watching that show, all of a sudden I started hearing thoughts of suicide, thoughts of depression, anxiety. And I'm like, what is going on? I've been raised in a healthy home and a healthy family. I've never had thoughts like this before. Like, what is happening? And the Lord convicted me. I stopped watching the show. I repented and those thoughts immediately left. Sometimes we have to exa examine ourselves with the Lord. Like, Lord, where is the open door? What am I giving into in my life that is letting these thoughts in? And it's not to condemn. There's no condemnation in Christ. He, he can set you free. He can set you free of guilt and shame today. Some of you may be dealing with guilt and shame. Like, man, Hannah, like, I've struggled with a sexual sin. I've struggled with pornography. I've struggled with the things that you're talking about. I've started to dabble in the new age. There's no condemnation. There's freedom in Christ. You repent and you give that to him. You lay it at the altar and you say, I'm not going back. I'm following Jesus and there's no turning back. Y'all, see, I'm extremely passionate about reaching Gen Z and reaching this generation. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. There are times where me personally, I felt like throwing in the towel. See, this, this past year, I lost somebody who was very close to me. And there were moments where I literally felt like, Lord, I don't know how I can do this. I don't know how I can continue on. And the enemy started throwing lies at me, insecurity doubts, fears, like, man, like, I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like continuing on, like, I just need to take a rest season, I don't know what to do, and literally soon after these thoughts, the Lord started just speaking truth to me, I immediately got phone calls from pastors, and they're like, Hannah, you're no longer going to be preaching from a place that you've been taught, but now a place that you've experienced, literally right after I started having those thoughts, and the Lord just encountered me, and the insecurity just left. All the lies just left. Do you, do you guys know what has kept me going through life? Through life's trials, tests, and temptations? Knowing that I am a daughter of God. Knowing my identity in Christ. Loving God with all of my being. And knowing that he loves me. And this is a really important one. Being rooted in the scriptures and knowing what the word of God says. Because every time the enemy tries to speak lies to me, I could say, you know what? I know what this word says. And you can shut your mouth because I know what the Bible says and I'm going to speak truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for freedom. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that I have victory through Jesus Christ's blood. Sorry for my slang. I told the devil to shut his mouth. But... The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus comes that we may have life and life more abundantly. Community is also really important. Get plugged into a local church. Listen, and if you have faced church hurt this morning, it's not Jesus that's hurt you. People are imperfect, but Jesus is perfect. That's how you can stay rooted and grounded because you're not putting your trust fully in people, but you're putting your trust fully in Jesus, who is perfect and who will never fail you. Identity. The word. The fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Identity is who you believe 
that you are. And everyone places their identity in something. And if you place your identity in anything else other than Jesus, it'll produce death in you and not life. What voices are you listening to? We're going to talk about four lies of the enemy about your identity and God's truth that dismantles these lies. How did Jesus combat lies in the wilderness from Satan? He quoted scripture. How can you quote scripture if you don't know scripture? And that's not a condemnation statement. You can learn scripture. You can open your Bible today. Not tomorrow. Today is the day to open the word of God and dig in. And like, I am going to know this word. And I'm going to let his word become who I am. Because what God's word says is who we were created to be. We have the world out there trying to tell us all of these things of who we are. But they didn't create us. So why are we listening to people who didn't create us to tell us who that we are? So lie number one is, I'm an orphan, and no matter what I do, I'll never be good enough to be used for the purposes of God. Maybe you have family problems, a messed up home life. You're like, I'm not good enough. How can I be used for the purposes of God? Guys, I was bullied in elementary school and somewhat in middle school as well. And it literally made me start to make that my identity. Hannah, you're awkward. You're an awkward turtle. Literally, that's what they called me in middle school. I made my Twitter handle Awk of Turtle, okay? I think it's gone now, so don't try to look it up. Uh, <laughs> But I literally started to take on that identity, and I was like an awkward homeschooler, and I'm just like, man, like, so much insecurity, so much fear of man. So if you start to listen to what the world, what the enemy is saying about you, it'll literally become who you are. I literally started to become that way. I started to become awkward, couldn't really talk to people very well. The enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses day and night, and he's always going to try to accuse you, speak accusations, whether it's through other people or whether you're just hearing it directly. Here's the truth on that, that though. Listen, the truth is you are a son and a daughter of God. There is no condemnation or shame in Christ. It says that in Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation in Christ. Your family issues don't define you. Your past doesn't define you. Jesus is the one that should define you. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into a fear. Come on. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. See, what we're doing here today, we're dismantling these lies and we're replacing it with truth. Jesus said the truth will set you free. Lie number two, I'm a sinner and I'll never find freedom from sin. Or maybe it's okay if I identify with sin because God's grace will cover me. See, an identification or a focus on sin will only get you stuck in sin, in a sin cycle. Or if you try to focus on sin and you're like, I want to live holy, so I'm going to say, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to sin. What are you doing? You're actually focusing on sin. You're focusing on the thing you're trying to get free from. When in reality, you need to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, and need to march forward. And you say, you know what? No, I'm focusing on Jesus because who you hang out with the most is who you become the most like. So if you're going to try to hang around your sin over here, you're probably not going to get free from it. But if you're going to go over here and hang out with Jesus, who's pure and holy, then you'll probably get free from your sin. Okay? We need to be focused on Jesus, beholding Jesus, what his word says. And, and here's another thing, when step on toes again, people try to identify with their sin. Well, I'm a gay Christian. Okay, that's like saying I'm an alcoholic Christian. I'm a fornicating Christian. I'm an adulterous Christian. I'm a thieving Christian. I'm a lying Christian. 
why are we identifying from the very thing that Jesus died to set us free from? And can I just say this? God is not confused about your gender. God is not confused about your gender. He's not confused on who you are. He knows you. He loves you. He sees you. You're not alone. And if you feel alone today in this room, no. The Lord is not a God that is far off. He is right here. If you're truly born again of the Spirit of God, He is right here and you are not alone. Stop getting advice from people that say the opposite of what God tells you that you are. Stop getting advice from the devil himself. Come on, somebody. AKA that one friend that ain't sanctified that you're hanging out with that the Lord told you to get rid of a couple years ago. It's not that we don't love them. It's that they're not taking you to higher places in Christ. They're dragging you down. Here's the truth. In Christ, you have been set free from sin, and sin no longer has dominion over you. You were once a slave to sin, but now you're a slave to righteousness. We need to be so in love with Jesus that we don't want any other worldly thing in the way. Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 14 says this, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. Pre present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. So when we hear, oh, I'm just a sinner, I'm just a sinner, I'm a sinner saved by grace. No. What does the Bible say? Stop identifying with your sin, yo. Listen, Romans chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart, from the heart, not the brain, okay? From the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness, Jesus has given us freedom from sin. We are no longer sinners in Christ. So listen, when Paul writes letters in the Bible, guys, he doesn't go to the sinners. How does he start his letters? Say to the saints. All right? And Jesus has not given us freedom to sin. He's given us freedom from sin. This means we're no longer supposed to continue on in our sin. Jesus said, be holy as I am holy. God has sent the Holy Spirit to help us live pure lives. And we need to start relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk around on this earth again with bad posture, acting like we don't got the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of us. What are we doing? I'm sorry, I'm getting sassy, but we need to learn this, y'all. It's so important. We live in America. I don't know, most, I'm assuming most of you live in America. At least you do now. America is so logic-based. We view everything as right here. As if there's no such thing as the spiritual realm. And then people start to get afraid when we talk about casting out demons or the power of God, or raising the dead, or healing the sick, they're like, what do you mean you can heal the sick? I'm like, I can't, Jesus can, and the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in the inside of me, and he has given us the authority by the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out demons and to heal the sick. And we need to start seeing the power of God move in our churches again. It is good to just teach the word of God, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit alongside of that. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in talk, but in power. Jesus preached, and then he operated in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you can do the same. We got kids being stuck into your dead and dry church services, and they're getting bored with your dry Christianity. We need to show them that the power of the Holy Spirit, they can operate in that, and they can walk in that. They're not even getting free from depression in, in the Americanized churches. 
because they don't believe in deliverance. And they're not teaching the truth of the word of God. Come on, somebody. Let's start getting out the word of God again. And so you know what? I know the world keeps coming out with all these new ideas and these new teachings and the new age, right? We need to get back to the simple gospel, to the truth. This generation keeps getting demonized because they're giving in to all this complicated stuff. No, get back to the Bible. Get back to the truth of God's word. It's still relevant for today. It's the living, active word of God that is sharper than two, any two-edged sword. We need to use this to fight. This is our weapon to fight. The enemy's coming at us. We're like, no, thus saith the Lord. I am free from the power of sin. I am free from the powers of darkness. All right, lie number three. I will never get free from darkness or the tormenting thoughts that I'm facing. And I talked about earlier how stats show that Gen Z is the most suicidal, depressed, and anxious generation in history. And can I just say, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so I'm going to speak today that Gen Z will be free from suicide in Jesus' name. Gen Z will be free of depression in Jesus' name. Gen Z will be free of anxiety in Jesus' name. They will walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hand right now and say, Lord, set me free. Lord, I will be free in Jesus' name. Here's the truth. Jesus has given you freedom from the powers of darkness, and you will fight from a place of victory, not defeat. Jesus defeated Satan already on that cross. Yes, he is the God of all lies, and he's still operating in the earth today, but you need to know that he's already defeated, and the Lord's going to throw him into a lake of fire at the end. So you need to know that you're fighting from a place of victory. If the devil comes to tempt you, say, no, it is written. Can I just say, we need to start flicking the devil off of our shoulder. We're acting like he's bigger than Jesus. Like, no, can everybody just right now just flick the devil off your shoulder? Yeah, right, flick the devil off your shoulder. We're like, man, like we feel like he's all big and bad. But no, Jesus has the victory. Flick him off your shoulder. He's not that big. He's not that powerful. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. But you're no longer following him. You're following Jesus. First John, this is a lot of scriptures, but I'm telling you, we're going to break these lies off today. First John chapter 3 verse 8 says, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. I'm about to run up in this church. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm Pentecostal, yo. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape. That you may be able to endure it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, can I just say this? This life is short and temporary. It is a blip. And we're so focused on this blip that we forget we we're born, we die, and then eternity is literally forever. But we get so caught up in this. What are my friends saying? What are my friends listening to? 
Eternity is forever. It doesn't matter. My life is for the Lord, and I'm going to have fun with Jesus. Yes, my friends may be out partying on Saturday night, but I'm going to be in bed because I got church on Sunday morning. Lie number four. Lie number four. You are defined by who the world says that you are, and you have to conform to what the world is doing. So in order to fit in, I got to listen to the latest hits. Drake, Lil Baby, Doja Cat, Juice World, Cardi B, Bad Bunny, and Taylor Swift. Uh, listen to me, y'all. No one gets to declare and speak karma and seduction over this temple of God. No, we're not given in to seducing spirits. Do you understand that the people that are creating this music, they're not following Jesus? And so what do they have in their life? If you're not a child of God, who are you a child of? They're following the devil and the devil's plans for their life. Do we pray that they'll get saved? Yes. I pray they come to salvation. They impact this generation for the glory of God. But they are listening to the lies of the enemy for their life. And they're taking pleasure in it. And they're putting it into their lyrics. And you're singing it. And you're singing it. And you're speaking it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you're like, why do I have depression and suicidal thoughts? What are you, what are you listening to? Are you listening to music that literally is talking about, I want to kill myself? Because what they're doing is they're sitting there rapping about, I want to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? What are we doing? I know we might got some Swifties up in this room, okay? But pay attention to the lyrics and the kind of music. I don't suggest watching their music videos, but the kind of music videos that they're putting out. It shows you what they're under. It shows you what influence that they're under. Here's the truth. Come on. You are who God says that you are. God calls us to be set apart and to find our identity in him, not in the opinions of the world. I said it earlier, but worldliness and sin opens doors in our life. We wonder why we are struggling with a bad attitude, bad thoughts, sin, all this stuff. Worldliness, the demonic, we have the door wide open. It's time to shut the door today and actually repent to do a 180 and walk towards the things of God. Galatians chapter 1 verses 3 through 4 says this. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God and Father. Come on. He has delivered us from, we just learned, we just talked about this, right? He has delivered us from Satan, the domain of darkness. He has delivered us from sin. He has delivered us from ourselves, selfishness, pride. He has delivered us from the ways of this world. I have literally seen young people be taken out and stop running in the God-given calling that was placed in their life because they give in to these lies. Whether it's through suicide or whether it's from or them going back into the ways of this world. God's truth is what will set you free today. And here's a quote from Pastor John Hoven. And he said, the devil wants to convince those who have everything that they have nothing. You have everything in Christ. You have everything you need to be more than a conqueror in your life. And can I just say the reason? One reason that I actually stopped getting bullied in school was I actually started to conform to what the popular kids were doing. I started to listen to the same things they were listening to. I was, I was a pastor's kid. I was to in total rebellion. Listening to the same things that they were listening to. Talking the same way that they, they, were, they were talking. You know, acting the same way that they were acting. And I struggled because of it. See, you can listen to all the sermons, you can go to all the conferences, you can listen to all the podcasts, but until you truly get rooted in the word for yourself, you're just going to be living off of hype. You're not going to be living free. You need to know Jesus for yourself. You need to know what the word of God says for yourself. I don't want to be just a hype Christian. 
Yes, I have fun, right? We can jump around. Okay, you know, Elevation Rhythm is, is coming up tonight. We're going to jump around for the Lord. Okay. But we don't need people living off of hype Christianity where we're jumping around from conference to conference, but we never get rooted in the word. Because we have a feeding tube to the pulpit. And we need to cut the feeding tube and actually listen to the voice of God for ourselves. Actually get a word from God for ourselves. You can actually get a word from God and prophesy for yourself. You can actually get a word from God and preach to this generation yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of God. Isn't that so cool? Why entangle ourselves in the chains that Jesus died to set us free from? And two scriptures I want us to remember today is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, for who the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. God is searching for those whose hearts are loyal to him. We see this in the Old Testament. I know the Old Testament people talk about, oh, it's so boring. No, the Old Testament is so cool. Y'all want to watch Marvel movies, but have you read the Old Testament? <laughs> it, is, it is amazing to see and just to read. Like, I literally was just reading Genesis the other day. And I just started laughing out loud because I'm like, this is so, like, this is so interesting. When you look at the Old Testament, you see that every time the Israelites left God, that's when they got attacked. That's when they were vulnerable to the enemy. That's when they faced hardships and they started just walking in circles. But every time they were loyal to God, that's when God helped them to get through. That's when he protected them, when he delivered them. In this world, you're going to have temptation. You're going to have trials. You're going to have the enemy trying to take you out left and right. But if you can keep your eyes fixed on eternity, what the word of God says, and rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, you can get through by the grace of God. All right. Last scripture, and then we're going to have a time of prayer. John chapter 14, verse 26 says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he will bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. You know, my dad, when he was first starting out with his pastorate, pastorate he wanted to go to Bible college, but he didn't have the money for it. And so the Holy Spirit said, I will teach you all things. And literally my dad, like maybe a week later, randomly gets a phone call, garage sale. They, they, this lady, this older lady had this full box of books full of the old time saints, Leonard Ravenhill, A.W. Tozer, like all these amazing men of God. And he just started reading and shredding through all of them. And when I say shredding, I mean he's reading. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just started teaching him. And I want you to know that today. Bible college is amazing, but have you tried being taught by the Holy Spirit? Have you tried getting into the secret place and listening to the voice of God and reading the scriptures? And I believe there's people in this room right now that you need set free. And I don't know if the worship team wants to come up, but you need set free of depression. You need set free of anxiety. You're having suicidal thoughts, and that needs to go today. That doesn't need to continue on. You need to be set free. And you need to know that people want you here. And people love you. And most importantly, out of anyone, Jesus loves you. And you're going to stay here and you're going to live. And so there's people in this room, maybe it's pornography, maybe it's lust, maybe it's addiction, maybe it's drugs. 
whatever it is that the Holy Spirit is actually speaking to you about right now, you've been trying to get free, you're in a sin cycle, you're like, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here. Listen, the Lord has you here today. And we want to pray for you. So if you are in the bottom down here, as soon as I start praying, if you want to come up and just start getting on your knees before the Lord and laying those things down and say, Lord, I'm following you. I'm not turning back. And if you're in the top, if you just want to stay where you are and kneel there, you're free to do whatever you feel led to do. But let's pray. Lord, I thank you right now for the power of the Holy Spirit that sets us free. I thank you, God, for the truth that sets us free. I thank you, God, that we don't have to listen to the lies of the enemy, that you are good, and we glorify you, God. God, I pray if there's anyone in this room right now who's struggling with anxiety or suicidal thoughts, that you would set them free. That you would set them free from the lies of the enemy, God.